we're going to factor this trinomial and notice that in this trinomial I have a number that is not 1 in front of the x squared. I cannot factor out a common factor. So this 5 is going to impact the factors that I have. Now there are a couple different ways to factor things like this. My high school teacher taught me to guess and check, which was uh, a very frustrating way to learn because you had to keep making guesses and you got a lot of wrong answers until you finally got it right. What I'm going to show you is a process that is very similar to factoring when you have a 1 in front of the x squared and is going to use some of the things we've already talked about in this class. What we call it is the AC method. And I call it that because I'm going to multiply the leading coefficient, which is a lot of times denoted by A, with the last number, which is usually called C. And so 5 times 6 is the value 30. Now, I'm going to ask myself a couple of questions about 30 that should be familiar questions. First off, what signs am I going to use? Well, since it is a positive 30, my signs are both going to be the same. The 13 tells me that they're both going to be positive, so I'm going to use positive values. Now, I'm going to pick the factors of 30 that add up to 13. And you can list your factor choices. We've done that on a couple other videos. We're reusing the same number. And I'm going to use 10 and 3, or 3 and 10. It doesn't matter what order, but 10 times 3 gives me 30. 10 plus 3 gives me 13. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to use these two factors to take this middle term and break it apart into two terms. So my trinomial is going to become a polynomial with four terms. Now you might have the question, Professor Perkins, does it matter what order I put these two middle terms? Could I put the 3x here and the 10x there? And the answer is certainly yes, it will totally work. The reason I want to split this trinomial into something with four terms is I want to take advantage of my process of factoring called grouping. So if you don't remember grouping, go back to the previous section and review that. But what I'm going to do is I'm going to look at the first two terms together and the last two terms together. First two terms, I'm going to factor out a 5 and an x. 5x squared, when I factor out the 5x, leaves me x. 10x, when I factor out the 5x, leaves me plus 2. The second pair of terms, I'm going to factor out a 3. And 3x, when I factor out the 3, leaves me x. 6, when I factor out the 3, leaves me a plus 2. The grouping did work. The way I know that is I have the exact same thing in the parentheses. So I will factor out that x plus 2. And what I'm left with from the first term is 5x. What I'm left with from the second term is plus 3. As always with factoring, you can multiply your two binomials together, and once you're done foiling it, you will get the trinomial that we started with. And there is my factored expression.